Welcome back to the shop here in beautiful Canterbury, New Hampshire. Tonight, I'm going to show you how to make your own floating shelves without buying any of that fancy, expensive metal hardware. We're going to do it with some uh, kind of like a fundamental structural uh, idea that is in woodworking and it borrows from the idea of a torsion box basically building a web an internal web of material like crisscrossing and then skinning it over top and bottom with a solid um, panel usually it's going to be a plywood type panel so the combination of that sheet material that's solid and I mean that's uh, not changing dimension like a piece of plywood the combination of that one on top and the one on bottom glued across all that internal web of material makes an incredibly strong stable uh, top it makes it makes an incredible strong like uh, box basically a long flat box okay so it also, what, what's nice about it is that it's lighter and it's dimensionally stable. So we're gonna use that concept in building this box. Now, a client who had this idea, uh, they were in the design world, he was building this um, idea for these shelves that would be made of granite but they, and wood and they would be floating and they would be available you know at bathroom stores and whatnot the higher end places where you could build a hanging shelf to put on the wall but we had to design we meaning me a way of that hanging and being structurally sound to support a piece of granite which i did a little of the math looked it up which a square foot of three quarter inch thick granite weighs about 13 pounds and if you go to the inch and a quarter, which we really didn't on this project, you're up to 18 to 20 pounds for one square foot. So we weren't making these shelves terribly long or large. They were only averaging about five inches wide. So they needed to be of some thickness in order to get the rigidity and support against the wall. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm not going to bore you with all the cutting of the parts. I've already cut the parts. I'll just explain. We're going to go right quickly into assembling one of these torsion boxes so we can get to the fun part. Then at the end, I'll show you some of the different profiles and options you can use and some of the actual profiles that I made on the prototypes for these bathroom shelves. If you're wondering where you can buy those bathroom shelves today after they were marketed, you can't <laughs> because I don't think it worked out. I, I don't know what happened, but they were down at the design center in Boston and you know, business is not always that easy. All right, so here we go. Now the internal core is just made up of white pine in this case. And it's about only five eighths of an inch thick and these particular pieces measure an inch and a half wide. Okay, so five eighths by an inch and a half. And then the length of these, this really is arbitrary. It depends how long you want to make your shelf. But these happen to be 20 and three quarters. Overall, this shelf was designed to be approximately five inches by two feet long. So this is how long we start and we kind of build out from there to get to our two feet in length. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I want to just lay it out for you dry so you can see what it looks like. But here's going to be the front. This is the inter internal core. I'm going to put these little end pieces on here, and then we'll have the frame kind of build out with these smaller pieces on the inside like so. And then the second longer piece is going to come inside like that, okay? So this is all going to be glued and tacked together. Once we get that frame, we'll then skin it over top and bottom with this quarter inch plywood. Now you could use this in Baltic birch and be good there. Now we've got, this is the internal frame. This is the... Um, the white pine frame but notice how we don't go all the way to the back here 
That's for the hanging cleat. This is going to be the cleat that gets screwed to the wall and the box slides over the cleat and gets screwed in to the cleat, creating an incredibly strong box attached to the wall. Now, we're only going four inches deep for this illustration, and then it's going to be framed with whatever material you want. I went with an inch thick material, so it ended up coming out to five inches. But I'll show you there's a variety of ways. Now, you could go wider than this. This actually could handle wider. But keep in mind, if you go really wide, it wouldn't be a bad idea to add a little in height because the height will add a little to your cleat strength and the less likely for it to twist over time. But What about length, Tom? How much support would need to be added for a longer length? Length is, is really up to you. You're going to have this cleat. This is the mounting cleat to the wall. So this is going to get anchored into at least two studs, okay? At least two. And then if you're going longer, just pick up more studs that you're anchoring into. So if you go with a four foot piece, you could put it right in there. You just don't want to make sure you catch at least two. And then you could put some other anchors in, in between if you'd like to add. But there you go. That's going to be our little demo for a two foot. So let's go ahead and make the assembly and I'll show you the whole thing. This is the way we just glue up a torsion box. It's super simple. You're just going to take some glue and let's get it on the end of the work pieces here first. And I'll put it on each end. This was a French's mustard bottle top. The camera lady was sneaking out here. Thanks to one of you who suggested that as a good substitute. It really does work. I'm just going to get it glued on there like that. And I'm, I'm going for flush on that front edge. So all we're going to do is get it flush and then just pin nail. Take your fingers away before you pin in case it comes out the side. And then we'll hit the other end. All right, I forgot to take my fingers away. Sorry. I did forget. Um, Terrific. So the camera and I, lady and I had a great time in Hollywood while we were gone. <laughs> we actually did spend some time in Hollywood, um, not because uh, we're starring in any new show or anything. Although if anybody has any ideas, please <laughs> let us know. I'm sure they're running. <laughs> running to get us. I think, uh, I think the, what, what is it? HGTV needs a show like this. All right, so, um, no, we're out visiting uh, our family. Our son is out in Pasadena now. So first time I was ever in Southern California, and I can see why people love that weather. Man, I mean, the traffic's a little tough, but um, it's outstanding. I mean, it's like every day was like the kind of, day that when we have around here we say oh this is perfect and glorious this is dry air and just incredible anyway um, we've got our own little taste of heaven here so we're not going anywhere but it does make you think of visiting out there more often or taking the show on the road <laughs> <laughs> right getting that camper the camera lady has in mind and heading off to Beverly Yes, Lupe. loading up the truck. Pasadena is where we were. Our son lives in Pasadena. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I next time I'm going to do a little more woodworking visitations. Um, like I know Sam Maloof House is there. I did drive by the Gamble House, which is famous. This iconic uh, craftsman style house that was built uh, by the Green and Green Brothers. Uh, or oh yeah. And that was. That was outstanding just to go. I went by there early just two mornings ago, and it was awesome. I'm going to get back there and, and check that out. I trust you're paying full attention to what I'm doing here while we're talking. So I just marked so I'd get approximately thirds here. These don't really matter that much. But see, we're building a nice little frame, and it's getting glued together, every bit of it. And 
it starts to create this strong web and just with butt joints you know you don't need to do overlap joints to an internal core like this you could build up a big frame like make it any size i'm, I'm not for a, obviously a shelf but um if you wanted to make a rectangular frame that you would just have a torsion box that way but you'd have a number of cross pieces okay so let's go ahead and finish knocking this together I did drive down just to see the the entry of the rose bowl as some of you have probably seen I saw where the rose bowl parade goes down the street <laughs> Things you remember when you were a kid, you know, when color TV first came out. <laughs> oh, gosh. I actually, I don't, I don't, I'm kind of at that point where I, I do remember black and white TV, but not real well. Um, but I, there's something about that parade that I just remember loving to watch as a kid on New Year's Day. Okay, I think we got it. Everything is looking pretty sweet. Okay, so there we go. So now, what do we measure? We've still, we've got our, the four inch internal and overall length of this piece right now is 22 inches long. So our frame piece could be an inch and we would end up with our 24 by five. So, Let's go ahead now, and it's time to put on the skin. So here we've got a quarter inch piece of plywood, pretty nice plywood, nothing to write home about, but it's pretty nice. Uh, if you had Baltic birch, that would be better. I would recommend Baltic birch ply, quarter inch, if you're going with a higher, thicker shelf. You could even go um, a little thicker if you had it, if you were making a wider shelf, but you still, you want to, you're trying to maximize the core material height too because that helps it from tipping down. All right, so let's just go ahead and get some glue right on the top here. I'm just going to go right on around. This is dead simple, and this is that where you get the torsion box, um, the physics of that, because watch what happens. When this goes on, in order for this to fail, this box, all of these glue surfaces have to fail for it to, for it to flex at all. So imagine if you had a number of ribs here going crossways and like that, you had a little network of ribs, and you put a piece of plywood on there, every one of those joints on the surface has to fail or slip in order for that to deform. That's why it's extremely strong and stable and flat and yet light. Almost like the old airplane wings, you know, you're, you've got this core with a skin over the top and it's extra, very strong. So we're using that. So when you get it on the top and the bottom, that's where you get this added advantage. So here we go. We're just going to nail this in. And I don't want to use solid wood in this case, you know, because you do have the option of adding, you know, granite on the top if you'd like. This is going to be strong. Don't take it for... <laughs> Sorry. Um... I almost did a horrible pun. Oh, thank you for granted. Okay. Danny's curious, talking of glue, what is D3 and D4 glue? Are tight bond glues those? Say that one again. What's D3 and D4? D4 glues. I don't know. I don't know. Just somebody help me out with that. So oh. they're not tight bond glues or not D3 and D4, as far as you know? I'm not sure what you mean by the designation of D3 and D4. I'm hitting all the questions out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> Honest to goodness. Oh, you know this one, Michael's curious. How long are those pin nails? Oh, geez, my like, no, they are inch and three eighths. Let me check the box. <laughs> yes, inch and three eighths, Michael. Thank you very much. So you kind of answered John's question. What would you do to make the outside look more luxurious? Maybe veneer it. You already said Grant. Grant. Oh, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Okay. All right, let's get the. Uh, we're just okay. doing the core right now. We'll. 
That's a great question though. There's so many options. All right, so here we go. Uh, that's, we've got the top. It's already feeling quite rigid. Now let's go ahead and get it on the bottom and we will have <laughs> the core of our shell. Okay. Does the torsion box need one inch timber? Would it be just as strong with half inch thick timber? Or wood? Half inch thick? Um, good question. I think a little thicker. I like it to be in a close to three quarter inch thick here. And then by the height, it's light. So, and you're getting it in that, that anyway. So I think I just want it a little stronger here. You get that better glue surface on the skin. But you could probably get away with it being a little thinner if you wanted to, but um, if that's what you had. But I think this is a good size right here. All right, so now I'm going to, again, just mash that in and go for flush. I had pre-cut these, you know, to accommodate the 22 and a half plus the two pieces on the end. Or the 20 and 3 quarters, sorry, plus the two 5 eighths pieces to give us our 22 in length. So we're 4 by 22 with the plywood. But again, that is arbitrary. You can, this is just for demonstration purposes, please try this at home. <laughs> so Dan says the D3 uh, and D4 are PVAC glues. They're water resistant. Okay. Uh, well, this... This is type one three, and they call it waterproof. So water resistant is usually for one that'll resist for a time, but it's not technically uh, gonna hold up under the testing conditions that deem it waterproof, which is, I forget what it is, but they keep it under water, and sometimes it's, it's heated water for a certain amount of time before it can be qualified as waterproof but you can look at all that if you you can nerd out on the tight bond website and get all that info okay i'm just using this roughly for a spacer and get these last ones in all right i think we got it that looks marvelous all right we've got our Torsion box with our nice little hollow cavity in the back. Huh? And, man, I cannot even twist it. All right, so we're not going to go through the whole routine of trimming it, but I want to show you some examples of methods you can use. So I did this one earlier. Really didn't need to, but this one has solidified. It's pretty strong now. Um, but let me show you some of the examples that I actually made. We made like four shelves for the granite project years ago. And one of them has just a simple cove and a bead at the bottom. This is kind of traditional. And this was made to go on and set to be flush at the top like this. So you had this nice recess uh, into which the piece of granite dropped. So this is about a quarter inch thick here, and the depth is a half inch. So when you get the three quarter inch thick granite, that would drop in, and you had like a quarter inch up of the granite piece. So we were using the standard available granite. Um, of course, you could, excuse me, you could probably get, use tiles if you were creative. You'd find tiles at... Um, you know, of different sizes, stone tiles. I'm not sure they, there you would have a lot thinner options and perhaps you could get it cut into the lengths and you could even seam it if you liked. But we were like the idea of the solid granite and they would just get it cut to those pieces and it dropped in nicely. So you can imagine this wrapping the corner to give you this kind of look on the shelf. So it dressed it up a little bit and then the stone was sitting proud with a polished edge there. Then we had, um, this, is, this is another variation of the same, but this one allowed for the granite to actually sit 
on top and piece of cherry. I can show you this is only a 5 eighths thick, but you can see how when it extended over the, the stone on this one actually was overlapped and you saw the full polished edge all around with this kind of um, period looking classical cove and bead treatment. Then we had this other, this is a larger bead and cove. This gave even more extension for a wider shelf. So with the overhang, this one ended up being five and three quarters, almost six inches wide you could go with that one. So it's six inches wide by two, that's a square foot. That's 10, no, I'm sorry, 13 pounds of stone. 13 pounds resting on that one little cleat. Huh? Think it can handle it? We'll see in a second. All right, so then we have this. This is one of my favorites, this bullnose, large bullnose we did in um, maple. And that, again, went on and it has a recess for the stone to sit in. And so this would miter at the corner and miter into the wall so it just stopped flush like that. And then the stone was made to drop in with a little bit of play there. So the stone ended up being four and a quarter by, what did I say, 22 and a half. And then you had that nice bull nose all around. It was a pretty sweet looking one. You can imagine the stone sticking up about a quarter of an inch, uh, but that's for another time to finish them off like that. But for tonight, I just want to show you a very simple example um, of a straight kind of straightforward wrap, which I did a little earlier. I took the same box, I prepped some stock, and I ripped it. I ripped it to width of our box. This is basically the same box, okay? And it's now it's wrapped with a piece of cherry. So it goes around and I just simply mitered the corners and little glue and pin nails in there and had it all set, okay? On the top it's flush and it's meant for a shelf to be placed on there. So it'll go on like this. And this is just a pretty dead simple shelf with a little overhang, about 5 sixteenths overhang all around and uh, this is some freshly planed cherry while this has been around a little while but this gives you an idea of just a more contemporary shelf unit you could have it's just more of the boxy look okay you can see what you can do with other treatments you could dress it up a little bit all right so there you have it now let's go ahead we've got um, this is the method of attaching. The box slips over the cleat and we run our screws in at an angle to pull it in at the top into the cleat material. So if this is our cleat material, it goes in, sits flush, the cleat gets screwed to the wall, you know, with a good level on there. And then you want to catch a couple studs and then we're going to screw this base down into the top of the cleat to keep it from pulling or rocking forward. All right, so let's go ahead over to our wall of wonder. I just clamped a, uh, a door on here. We attached already our cleat. Now this core is particle board, not great. Uh, it does hold well enough though, so I put I've got five screws in here, but I could have put just three screws and been fine. I just want to make sure that it didn't go anywhere. And this is a, you want to get a good quality screw to anchor this to the studs. So you want to have something with some good thread on it. Um, let me show you what I used here. You don't want to use exactly this screw, but I'm just showing you for example. This I believe is an eight but it's got a nice deep thread and it's good and hard like like those strong deck screws you see and so I, that goes in and I'm getting good purchase into the wall. So make sure you're a good inch 
you know, up to an inch and a half into the stud would be ideal, right? So you get a couple of those at least. If you have a wider cleat, you want to make a wider box, no problem with that. Just put two on top into the stud, all right? So there we've got that. I anchored this in. I've got it horizontal. Now I'm ready to bring in my torsion box on my floating shelf. And it slips over the cleat. And I've already pre-drilled these holes. And I had them run in earlier, so we should have problem, no problem. But usually I would put a little beeswax on those. Uh, makes it a lot easier. But see how this is going in? And it's going into the cleat at an angle. I'm not really going into the wall with this. It's just driving down into the cleat. And man, does that pull in a what? And I want to get them so that the head is buried, nothing's in the way. So now we have our shelf. And I'm telling you, that is rock solid. So let's bring over our shelf. Here's our dummy shelf. Now to attach, you want to cover the screws up obviously. Now you could choose to just do it a similar way and maybe um, rather than anything here, you plug that. So this is like a finished cherry and you've got a cherry edge wrapping it. You could do that. But I want to have a finished top or I put the piece of granite. So I would probably set this on here, maybe put a couple pins. You could actually just embed, a, you know, the, the magnets like we've done before, where you have the magnets and you just epoxy them in a little recess and it could fit on a pin and just hold it right in position so it would be solidly on there because this is just sitting on there. And whenever you want to move the shelf, you would just pop it off and then move it and you're good to go. Okay. There's some comments here about French cleat options, so there's no screws. If you use a French cleat, you would have to go narrower with your cleat, okay? Because you have to get the angle over the cleat, all right? So we're using the advantage of the torsion box, using the fuller weight of this. And I did think of putting a little angle on that, but regardless, if I put an angle here, I would have to have the, the complementary angle up underneath the plywood in the box. So here. So we would need to have, you know, to see how nicely that fits. There's not a lot of play in there. So there's, it's not going far. But yeah, if you put the um, French cleat on there, you would need such an angle. But to get it on there, this would have to be ripped narrower in this case using it like this, okay? And I would still, given what we're doing here, we're very shallow here. We don't have the advantage of a long cabinet, which is usually the French cleat. It's hanging more. Here we've got this little, there's gonna be a lot of pressure for it to come out here, especially if you go heavy on it. So I would always still run some screws down into the cleat, even if you get a little bevel angle on here like a French cleat. But I just like the idea that it's fitting in there snugly, so I'm gaining some more strength against twisting when I have a wider cleat in this case, okay? So you can go with it or not, but I just sort of decided the screws in this case were good and just go with that flat cleat. But let me just show you, just if there's any doubting Thomases out there, like myself, uh, how strong this actually is. We've got that on there. I'm just going to let this float on there for now, right? I just brought out one of my ooh, bow, bow flexes. This is, this is 52 and a half pounds. And we're just going to set it on that shelf. The uh, board itself is I'm out here. That's not really anchored down. But look at how tight that is on the wall. That has not flexed in the least. I would have brought out the other one and put 100 pounds on here. That's how much I believe in this thing and had them side by side, but they can't fit side by side. This is just to say, with the granite, 
we only had, um, it was eight pounds with the insert type, and it was like 10 pounds with the, the type like this. So 10 pounds, just one-fifth of the weight here. The whole uh, physics of it, you know, deciding how thick a skin to use, how deep to make your shelf, it depends somewhat on your purposes for it. If it's a lightweight, you could even go a little thinner than this. And yes, uh, I, did, I forgot to mention, the, thickening the cleat up a little bit will probably add a little, but as you think about it, think about the cleat length or thickness, if that is that much deeper, at some point, there's not the return because the screw anchor is traveling a long way to get to the wall and so there's a little loss there. So it really doesn't benefit you to go over a certain thickness there with your cleat on the wall. So I'm just a three quarter inch thick cleat. That's pretty darn strong getting a good anchor and getting those angle anchors in the top. And there's some conversation about how the underside how you might prep that, finish that, so that because people are going to be looking at that. If you, that's all up to you. You could, I, I was going to put some. Uh, you could put a piece of veneer over there. I was thinking about that on this shelf. It looks just like this. It's wrapped with the cherry. I guess I did show that earlier. I could just stain that with that uh, cherry stain that I talked about before. That early American honey tone amber, medium <laughs> that we got from Wood Finishing Supplies, um, is that the name of it? Can wood I Finishing know? Enterprises? Yeah, that's what it is. But um, we've talked about that before. It's a nice, it's a nice cherry looking stain. So it's a water-based stain. So you could stain it or you could be for real and just veneer this with some cherry first or use cherry plywood to begin with. Uh, gets pricey that way, especially for something that probably isn't going to be seen. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. That was fun. Mm -hmm. I hope that inspired you to make some magical floating shelves. And please send photos if you like. And if you want to really share, you can be part of the neighborhood and you can check that out on our website and share some photos of your work there. Thank you all once again for being part of this. Remember to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy this content. And we look forward to seeing you next week right back here.